So this may be interesting. What I have here is a PayPal. Um, this is a, a security token. Um, this is actually it's actually a um, a Verisign uh, produced card. It's OAuth, you know, OAuth, OAuth in card, blah blah blah. It's been by Verisign, but what this is is this is basically a um, it's a one-time key generator. So normally, you know, you, you have a number here, which I would assume is generated by some internal mechanism, you know, a pseudo-random number generator where they can predict the state. You know, and you press the button, and the display blanks, and you get new numbers. So what happened recently is, um, uh, apparently the RAM internally, it must use, like, volatile RAM, uh, apparently kind of stopped working, and you can obviously see that now it's just, every time I do a cycle, it generates just zeros. So I've had this for about two years, it's nice, you know, this way when you want to, you know, if you're going to spend money online, you know, not only do you need your password, but you need a actual, you need to have, you know, the card in hand, so if somebody breaks my password, they can't, you know, drain my accounts. So this is particularly interesting just because of the, uh, you know, the scale, you know, you've got something which has a, you know, it's actually, it's not an, uh, an LCD, it looks like a, like a electrophoretic display, like a e-ink display type thing. But, uh, what's interesting is that, uh, as you can probably see, you know, you can flex it, and it still works. So what they've managed to do is they've managed to make basically everything, all of the important parts, flexible. You know, there's presumably a battery in here somewhere. And if you flex it, you know, I don't see any area that's staying rigid. So I'm actually, I really would like to see what's in here. Um, these are about 30 bucks. Um, I've subsequently ordered another one, kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not too sure how this actually goes together. It looks like it's kind of laminated. But what I'm going to do is just, it appears there's a seam around the edge. Let's just see if I can't cut it apart and see if I can see anything meaningful inside. I've blanked out um, a couple sections just because it's got a, a unique serial number on it and I'm not sure if that's potentially risky to put on the internet, so not for you. So here's the actual display in kind of close up and you can see that the button is just, I mean there's nothing, I'll show you in a second, but anyways you can see it's a seven segment display. Um, so these little widgets over here, I've never seen do anything. But obviously you've got lots of little display segments. And, you know, it looks like they're pushing some sort of powder around in there from the look of it to me. You know, it looks a lot kind of like a lot of the really early Kindle stuff. Like I had a... Before the Kindle even came out, I had one of the Sony e-readers in it. The display had a similar texture, though it was much finer grained. So, you know, you've just got the blah, blah, blah. Verisign identity protection, you know, lots of body body crap, how to activate and so forth. OAuth, display card, Nagra ID, in card. I don't know if any of these are related. It also looks like the corner is nicked. So I'm actually not sure how they put these things together because there's nothing that even remotely looks like it could be an interface where they could you could program it through. Um, so I would assume that they basically have to, you know, laminate it up with it already powered. Anyways, so if we look at the edge of the card, you can see it looks like there's a seam. Can't tell, but it doesn't appear that there's like vinyl labels. It doesn't appear like something they set into the card. I kind of expect this is going to be another long saga of peeling away. So I've kind of been whittling away at it with some cutters, and you can see that oh yeah, there's obviously something slightly metalized right there. So the real question is, um, currently still works. There's, it looks like it's like a metal foil, which I would guess is the conductors. I'll just kind of keep notching away at it. Hey, that looks interesting. There's a dark colored section in there. So 
Well, it looks like it extends all the way over to this edge. So I've been just cutting back along the edge until I can kind of see the circuit board internally. Or whatever it uses that, you know, it uses for a circuit board. Some sort of flexible medium. It appears that fortunately it doesn't, they don't route traces right near the edges. So it's interesting of note that the, the actual internal active component or whatever it's made of appears to be basically the size of the card. So now we're just looking in the side and you can see it's got um it looks like two thin layers of lamination on top of some sort of material. Um, and as you can see it goes all the way around the card. So this is kind of the button corner where I was kind of chewing it. Through. And just put a fresh knife in my box cutter. Oh hey. Interesting. That looks like a piezo. So, oh, look at that. So we have button element. And there's a little gap in there. So that's what makes the button work. Still works too. So this is um, quite sticky. So it looks like it's adhered together. So maybe this whole thing is just bonded along the edges. So it looks like that's like a circuit board. Oh hey, look! Some sort of antenna, I would imagine. So there's some sort of loop in there. I just fucked up the display. So, starting to see, hey look, service mount components. And also you can see there's a chip. Huh, don't work anymore. All right, time to start applying some brute force. Oh hey, I found the IC. So here is, so obviously this is the bottom half. Look at that smart display. So the display is integrated in. So this is an in-card C006AV1. So this, I would bet, is the battery. It's presumably like a, you know, just a sheet battery. One of the things you can see is if you look down here, let me see if I can get the reflection. Um, it looks like this is a two-layer, whatever this is, circuit board of some sort. Um, peel up, kind of. Yeah, it looks like there's two layers of metal. So, um, then you can see here, smart display SD120, and obviously I'm peeling some of the traces up. So this is a two-layer board of some sort. We've got an epoxy blob I see there. You can see lots of vias. And then here on the back of the uh, display, is a piece of silicon. Just covered in what looks like capped on tape. I, that would surprise me. I think this is um, PCB substrate. What is that? Um, the flexible PCB. I forget what the, the brand is. Uh, a film PCB substrate because it's definitely got wires on it. There is one IC. I don't know if that's the only IC. The other thing of interest is this device down here. Um, I kind of doubt that they do everything in the display driver. Uh, though I guess they could. Um, again, we have a, a smart displayer. Oh, smart displayer. So this, yeah, that, I think that piece of silicon is everything. You certainly got plenty of little tiny... Um, 402 passives, which you can see were just um, 
poking into the bottom side here, there's the button surface. So I would imagine that the way they program it is using this. It's got an induction loop in it with um, whatever that is. I think I'm going to get a little primitive on this. Alright, so um, that might be the actual like security I see. Um, I think I see silicon in there. Yeah, okay, so I'm not too sure what that is, but that looks like maybe some sort of, you know, some, some sort of IC in any event. It's very small, but you can see that, I think that's the entire die. Um, yeah, because over here we just have more bond pads. So that appears to be an extremely, like probably one of those smart card ICs. Um, too rectangular for me to think I broke the die. So that may be the actual security ASIC. Let me see if I can't get a better view of that. I don't know if this helps much, but here's the um, kind of here's the actual little epoxy blob, and you can see that there is something that looks like a chip in there. Ah, crap! I think I just lost it. Um, well, fuck! I just totally went it. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't finding that again. <laughs> oh, wow. So here is the um, the bottom side of the display board. The display board. You can see um, in card C006 AV11. And over here is the um, Presumably the uh, communication loop, and that's where that ASIC was, or whatever that device was. And then if you look on the bottom side, here's the display. So they may be doing some of the um, some of the logic for generating stuff in here as well. I'm not sure. You can see that this is the display is right up here, and then. Um, I would imagine that this foil area is the battery. Let's see if I can't lift this up. It could also be, there could be like a processor in here, but I doubt it. Okay, that just peeled out as a brick. Yeah, so look here, you can see there's um, two terminals there. And then actually, um, yeah, this is the battery. So you can see you've got here your two output terminals. And then it's got some writing on here. One second. So you can see it's got some writing on there. So actually, I wonder. Um, obviously, you can see I'm using a can of soda for uh, holding things up to get them in focus. But, um... Huh, it's even good. 3.154 volts. 3.155. So that is um, probably like a couple milliamps. Or excuse me, a couple milliamp hours. So that is a very, very, very small lithium cell. Um, I doubt it's rechargeable. It doesn't make any sense. Well, let's... um. making three volts. Uh, let's go over to... Huh! That's not bad. 13 milliamps. So this little fucker can put out 12 or 13 milliamps. I could light an LED for maybe two minutes. Uh, <laughs> voltage has dropped dramatically just in that you know minor loading, but hey look, it's recovering. So that is a very don't waste much space. And then you know there's other stuff here like um, you know, I wonder if these are test points or something. And you can see that um, you know this is kind of the board area and then they have a cutout here. And it looks like the contact of the battery is made just basically with tape. 
it just pushes against there. And then you can actually, one of the things of note is that this area is flexible and this is fairly rigid. Some more passives over here. So yeah, I'm not too sure. This is either the encryption IC, or the, the IC is responsible or it's just all done in the display driver. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if the IC here was just a... Um, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if the IC, you know, here was just for handling the RF communication or something. I'm not sure, you know, again, you've got two pieces of silicon. Um, there's not too many, well, most of these bond wires, like if you look and you can kind of see these two colored straps going over here. These may be test points, though I don't see how, well, Yeah, okay, these are all electrically isolated. So. Yeah, I don't see the, the cut in the PCB, you know, around these. They don't look like discrete pads, and this looks like a pore. But, you know, no connection. I wonder. All right, well, that's one of the better terminals. So I would bet that this here is ground, yeah, which also carries over to there. Another little test point. There's lots of little gold test points you can see. Um, anyways. Well, amazingly enough, I actually found a little piece of epoxy that held the um, whatever this IC was. Can't make out much. Um, let me add more light. But, um, so in here, oops, I'm shadowing it. I'm still shadowing it. Ah! So in here is, um, you know, just a little piece of silicon dye, you know. I'm not too sure how. I don't actually see any wire bonds, which makes me think that it's probably this is the bottom of the dye, and therefore not very interesting. Um, actually. If you look right there, that little gold spot there, may be one of the wire bonds coming out to one of the external pads. And so what I think you're looking at, all this stuff down there, is just the glue they used to hold the die down. Um, let me see, I should have another pair of tweezers around here. I don't see... You know, I don't think I'm going to try and do much else to this. I mean, here's the other side of the epoxy, and there's nothing meaningfully interesting there. Um, well, um, let's see, so it's in that pointy corner. Right, let's see, let me try flipping it back over again. All right, and then. Did I just break the chip? No, I just, oh, that's nice, it broke right along one of the edges. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much hope of me getting that out of the epoxy entirely. I'd need, like, some fuming nitric acid, and I don't have facilities to use that. Or, frankly, I haven't figured out where to source it from, either. You have to make it. Because people don't want to sell that stuff to you, they figure you're making bombs or something, I don't know. But, um... So that may be kind of the, uh, the heart of the whole thing. And I just tiddly winked it again. Anyways, so there's the inter inter interior of a uh, basically a hardware one-time pat or one-time key generator. You know, an OTP uh, one-time password generator from well, this one's actually manufactured by Verisign, but it's from PayPal. Uh, 